my name is Ardo, and I'm an artist on DeviantArt, and you are listening to The MBS Show. Hello and welcome to The MBS Show, episode number 142. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today would be... Ardell, and this, and welcome to the 100 Life, Death, Yid, or, um, so long, thanks for, no, wait, it's 142, jeez, I get, I get, I get the, the 42 mixed up with Life, Death, Universe, and everything. Yeah, that happens to me too, and judging by that I'm the only one here today, yeah, it does happen to me. <laughs> yes, it is parallel with Life, Death, Universe, and everything, if the internet does or does not work. Mm, true, that, that's a question there. But anyway, hey Ardell, <laughs> welcome to the show, how are you doing, man? Alright, thank you for bringing me on here. No problem. It's it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is going to be crazy. Yeah, like like I like this intro here is not pre-recorded or whatnot. This is all live and what? Uh, I have a tardis. <laughs> what are we doing? Mm. What is my life? True that. True that. <laughs> ponies. Ponies is my life. Mm. So before we start, I need to ask you the four important question. And question number one is: Who's your favorite character? I've been asked this one many times. I actually don't have like a top one favorite character. Really? No. I will say, well, I'll go with the two that I usually draw the most. Mm-hmm. I tend to enjoy drawing the most at least, which would be Vinyl's really fun to draw. And Lyra is also really fun to draw. Oh, really? No, because I'm looking at your, yeah, I do see Lyra. Uh, vinyl, I don't see that much. Huh. Okay. I've done a few vinyl pictures. I've also drawn her quite a bit, just sketching her, just as concept sketches. I need I need to do some more vinyl pictures. I have some more in the works that they're probably be doing. But I just kind of enjoy doing vinyl. She's really fun to do. Like her, the personality you can draw across her is just kind of fun. Mm, okay. Some people can put that on paper, as they say, where you can get the ponies characters in illustrated form. So that's cool. Yeah, she's a fun character. Same with Lyra. Also a really fun character to just draw Lyra can see into your soul. She wants to be human. Ah, I know for you. <laughs> oh, this fandom is nuts. We we put so many fan theories over things that doesn't exist. <laughs> yep. All uh, because she sat on a bench. The, she sat on the bench funny, that's why. <laughs> a couple seconds. It's okay. Indeed. Uh, but for my craziness aside, um, what's your favorite episode? Uh, favorite episode would have to be... Let's see. Yeah, there's so many good episodes. No, it would have to be season four finale. That is definitely the best, coolest, awesomest episode I've ever seen ever. True that, true that. Like the final fight between Goku and Vizita. No, sorry, I mean Goku and Frieza. No, no, I mean Goku and Cell. No, no, I mean Tarek and Twilight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Or <laughs> yeah. just like any other anime where they just do yeah. awesome things to fight. True that, true that. There's a, that scene, oh my goodness. <laughs> it was so. It was so good. She he threw her through a mountain. <laughs> she went she went through one end of the mountain and out the other. In uh, a little kids show. Yeah, now we're missing the sound effect when they teleport. Uh, we need that. <laughs> oh, but they they have too much budget, so they can splur a bit on the animation. <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen a, a kids cartoon show where they start doing fighting since like that intense since Digimon. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or well, at least um, PG rated like Pokemon, but Pokemon's a bit no, no. They get electrocuted every week. They do. And yeah. It's usually just like funny faces whenever they get electrocuted. Mm. Yeah, still you can see the bone, so that means violence, right? <laughs> I guess. Well, I guess the first couple seasons of Pokemon. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. and X and Y. The, the Japanese version of X and Y is really intense. Oh, <laughs> uh, but have to dumb it down. Oh, boo. No, I mean, like, if you, it's just the way how the voice actors come across. It's not at all whiny, like the English versions. Mm-hmm. The English versions, Ash sounds all whiny. But then, like, in the Japanese version, he's, like, super intense. <laughs> uh, Nintendo giving this money, so I need to do it well. <laughs> uh, so, awesome. then, good choice. Good choice in an episode. So, third question is, how did you become a fan of the show? Oh, yeah, that would be because of, uh, if anyone watches Elvis of Harmony, the one that hosts Sixth Stream got me into the show. It was in high school, like senior year of high school. And we had to do before school, like a uh, religious, uh, studying thing. It's part of the Mormon thing. You have to go do early morning seminary or 
after school seminary. So we had early morning seminary. Anyways, uh, I'd hitch a ride with him to school because I didn't have a car, couldn't afford one. Mm-hmm. Family's too poor. So he'd always hitch me a ride. And then since he was new in town, moved straight from Bellevue, he didn't really have anybody to talk to. So he's just kind of like, hey, yeah, you know, I found this, I found this really kind of cool show. It's called a My Little Pony. I, I tease him about that. I was like, oh, that's funny. You watch My Little Pony. And then after I was like, you know what? I can't really judge it. I don't watch it. So kind of sat down, watched the first episode. I was like, oh, you know, I got to finish up the second part of it this season now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, premiere so watch the second part i was like you know i can't really judge a show just by its season premiere i mean that wasn't bad so let me watch another episode i was like that's that's pretty cool and i didn't watch it for like a couple weeks i i did I, most people blow through it super fast but with me if i watch a show super fast then like, i can't re-watch a show very well because i'm such a visual heavy person i'll just like remember everything that happens like i could watch a show for maybe two or three times before i've seen it too many times so right. I was kind of, so I was kind of just like weaning myself on ponies. I didn't want to blow through all the episodes too fast. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, I didn't want my dad seeing. All right. So, kind of watching a few episodes once in a while, and then once summer hit, I was like blew through like nine episodes in one day. <laughs> all right, all right. <clears throat> Start blowing through tons and tons of episodes, uh... and yeah, that's how I became a Brody. Uh, so when was that episode that made you realize like, oh god, I'm a fan? Oh, that would be the. Uh, I mean, like I was watching, I was watching episodes casually, and I could watch, I could casually watch a TV, a TV show and not really be like, oh, you know, that's kind of cool, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I realized I was like a big hardcore fan <laughs> once I watched Bridal Gossip. <laughs> All right. Bridal uh, Gossip was the was the episode that made it for me. You know what? I might have to say that Bridal Gossip would probably be one of my top favorite episodes, just because it really got me into the show. <laughs> okay well, as for me I think the Curima Crusaders um, doing the rock concert that that was the turning point <laughs> that was a pretty good one too I did like that one I just like all like the, the humor that was in Bridal Gospel it's hilarious especially Flutter Guy Oh, oh god! That was an like, unexpected turn. Like I lost it when I saw it, when I heard Flutter Guy. I just lost it. I had to pause it and just then just lost it. I was like, "What is wrong with me?" <laughs> uh, so basically, we started the same way. Then we watched the first two episodes just to judge it, and then like, nah, it's not fair because it's one um, complete story. Well, it's a premiere. Yeah, yeah. The premiere. Well, I mean, I yeah. came. I came from a, uh, if you ever watch Babylon 5, it's uh-huh. an amazing TV show. But the first season wasn't very good, especially the premiere. Like, the premiere episode really wasn't all that great. But, like, if I would have judged it just from that, I would have never really gotten into the show. And I would have never watched all five seasons of Babylon 5. Because <laughs> it is amazing. All right. I mean, it's understandable because some shows, they start off pretty slow until yeah. they know what they want to do and stuff. Yeah, well, that when they had to switch around actors, like once the actors got switched around, the show just went whoop, way cooler. <laughs> they put they brought in Bruce Boxleiter, the guy who plays Tron. Mm. So and then once they brought him in, it's like, oh, this show is amazing. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So that's how you got in. So that's how you became a fan of the show. So what do your family and friends think about your love for said show? Oh, at uh, first I was like, I better not tell anyone because my dad, my dad is the biggest homophobe ever. Oh, cool. So if, if I would have said like, oh, dad, I like my little pony. And he would have been like, no son of mine's going to be gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Beat the gay out of you. Oh, beat the gay out of you. Or whatever, you know. <laughs> oh, God, no. So I was like, nope, better not tell my parents. So I kind of just didn't tell anyone that I liked the show until like I got my brothers. I kind of started liking it. Or <laughs> All right. So then it was like safety of numbers. Mm-hmm. So once I got my little brothers to like it, I was like, well, if he punishes me for liking the show, he has to punish basically all my family. So therefore, therefore, he can't just punish just me. <laughs> Yay, so I like the plan. Numbers. I like safety that plan. Of numbers. Uh, I like that plan. It's an awesome plan. So did he ever find out? Oh, yeah, he did. So what was his reaction then? Oh, he was kind of just like, at first, he was just, you could just see it on his face and just like kind of nicked about it. Kind of like whenever you mention anything gay, like anything about, like, for one example, using a lispy voice, like sounding super gay, he'll just like glare. Like, this <laughs> whole look of like, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you could kind of see like little, like, 
things like that for a while, and then after a while, you just kind of just didn't care anymore. Yeah, if it, if I don't let it bother me, it won't bother me. <laughs> Something like that. But also, because we because he didn't want to, uh, but the only thing he didn't like was when we were watching the show in front of him. He said, uh, "No, <laughs> you can watch him out of the room." <laughs> it's understandable. I mean, it's a good um, what's that word called? Compromise. Yeah, thank you. Compromise. So you you still can watch it, but not in front of me. Yeah, so we'll be up in our rooms. <laughs> oh, he just doesn't like to watch it because he's also one of those guys who just hates anime for no very reason. Um. Okay. I mean. Uh, no comment because anime is not for everyone, and so is ponies. I know, but I mean, like, there's an anime for everyone for everything. True. So we like, we've, I don't know. He gets he gets really up in arms, especially <laughs> about anime. Like for some reason, anime is like especially bad. Oh man, I don't get why. But like, whenever the anime is on, it's like, oh my gosh, it's the anime. It's so bad. Eh, reasons, <laughs> I guess. I, I I'm guessing he Google search anime and forget to turn safe no. search on. Like I, this is this is so irrationally so that like what was it my little brother littlest brother was mm-hmm. at Boy Scouts and he received some award or whatever and he's kind of bragging about it a bit. I mean, honestly, judging by all the people that do hang out as well in Scouts, they all are really big braggers, anyways. So it's not even surprising that my mm-hmm. littlest brother would be trying to take after him. So my dad was like, "Well, he was being all rude and bragging because of because of all the anime he watches." Like that oh. was his logic. I was like, "Wait, where, how did you arrive to that conclusion?" <laughs> Uh, anime. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand how you arrived to this conclusion. Please explain to me how you how you could possibly logically explain that <laughs> this is the only cause for that. Naruto. That's Not why of, he doesn't watch Naruto. Like, oh god! Like, like well, his brother would like. Uh, I mean, he would, he would sometimes look over and see us watching like Full Metal Alchemist or whatnot, but that's oh. not it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't see how you can get that out of Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> uh, no comment, yo, because um, mindset just, and whatnot. I, just, yeah. I was like, why? I don't understand. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but eh, some people, you know. So, yeah. so that's your dad. What about your friends? My friends? Uh, I actually really didn't have a lot of friends in high school. Like, we kind of talked a little bit, but I never really talked about my little funny a lot. And because I mean, we chat a little bit and whatnot. But then, like, when I got on Facebook and started actually drawing ponies, like, I'd start posting ponies on my Facebook. Oh, that was okay. something like, some of my old friends from high school would be like, yeah, I can't, I can't. I, they just unfriend me because they just don't want to see ponies on their Facebook page. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I don't even care. Uh, true, true. Yeah, you know, you're no friend of mine if you know, yeah, you know, yeah, no friend. I made a lot better friends in the fandom than I did outside the fandom. Oh, I mean, same here, man, same here. So, judging from where you are now, I'm guessing you're better off? Yeah, by far. Hmm. By far. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And so, that's the four important questions that I need to ask you. And I guess we can start the show then. Yeah. Awesome. So, let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is going to be guest time. Wow, this is going to be redundant. Oh, probably you're wondering where is Rom and James... They're having issues with internets and whatnot, so I'm doing this solo. Yay! <laughs> uh, but anywho, Ardell, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? I am that... Um, here, let me just put on these hipster glasses at first. You've probably never <laughs> heard of it, but I'm Ardell. I'm that artist guy who does a few pictures. You might have seen people around the internet, maybe. I don't know. I just mostly do fan art. For things, I mean, I haven't. I don't really produce music for the fandom. I just kind of do a lot of ponies, and somehow people started liking it, and I started drawing it some more, and people liked it. So you know, I just taught myself how to do art. So yeah, I'm just a fan artist. That's all. Nothing mm-hmm. special. No way, man. From what I see, your art is really good. And talking about art, how long have you been drawing, man? Uh, three years. Three years, for the fandom or personally? In general, just three years in general. Mm, really, you know? Huh. Yeah. So I'm looking at your gallery, and the first thing I see is the taco with Sonata thingy, and that looks good. And just to make a fair comparison, I went way back in the early days, and your art's not that bad. Oh, don't even compare that one, because that one was a uh, spur of the moment of the day picture, because uh, uh, I've been doing some upload pictures for Elements of Harmony. Uh, mm-hmm. Where I would be do I just do it that day, so I could work on my speed, and mm-hmm. not really care too much about quality. 
<laughs> so because a lot of times I get way too hung up over trying to make sure the picture looks just right and perfect and whatnot, and not just mm. worried about the concept, which is usually what people want. It's like a practice for if I ever want to open up commissions. Mm, okay, but now I'm just looking at the Chinese dragon and whatnot. You, how to put this? You're growing as an artist, and looking at where you started and where you are now, you've improved a lot. Oh yeah, I definitely have improved a whole lot. Like if, even if you look at my early pony stuff, which is probably easier to compare than my uh, pencil sketches I uploaded a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, like for example, my first digital piece. Some of it in my general gallery actually. It might be in their piece. Their piece of calling. Their piece yeah. calling. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. That was my yeah. first digital pony picture. Oh. So it looks good in terms of proportion. Well, wings are another thing aside. But yeah, the... I know. I couldn't draw the wings. And the... Well, she also looks like a hot black pony. <laughs> but it still looks good. I like the colors. Like, you... How do I put it? You progress. That's a good thing. A lot of my early digital pictures just look, like, super awful. Well, for one thing, I really, really, really hate that picture of the egg heads because... Mm-hmm. When I drew that picture, for one thing, it was only like the fourth digital picture I've ever drawn. But <laughs> also because I was doing it with stitches in my thumb, in my drawing oh. thumb. Because what? I was trying to get ready for work, and I was frantically trying to get ready for work. So I was trying to like get my lunch ready, and I had to open up a can, but I couldn't get the can open. So I just like ripped it open, and I sliced oh. open my thumb. Sliced oh. open my thumb, blood everywhere. <laughs> I was like, well, this is wonderful. So I, had, so I was trying to keep up on front and just do a picture every week type of thing. And mm-hmm. so I had to draw that picture with a sliced open thumb. You know what? That looks awesome. Knowing that, that looks awesome. God damn. Did, did you mention it in the... Oh, I did. I, I mentioned it in the... Description. Yeah, I, I mentioned it in the description. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's in the description. But I still hate it so much because it just looks so flat in the background. Like, they look like they've just been copy-pasted into the picture. The character. Hmm. That still looks good. looks good. So, uh, one logical thing to ask. What program were you using? Photoshop, Sci, or... Oh, I was using Photoshop well. Actually, uh, I've been using Photoshop with my crappy Bamboo Wacom mm-hmm. tablet, which, walk, I mean, Bamboo really doesn't have a whole lot of pressure sensitivity to it, so you can't mm-hmm. really fade it as well. Mm-hmm. And I was using the program that came with it, Elements 8. Oh, okay. Photoshop Elements 8, which is awful at blending, so if you draw... A line over it, it'll just do like a uh, solid line. So the only way I can blend colors is by lowering the opacity, the opacity, mm-hmm. and then just like doing multiple strokes to go and try to like to fade it in. I, it was really, really hard for me to figure out how to do good faded lines and coloring with with elements. I was like, ah. So I've been using elements ever since. I'll link it straight to you so you, you can find it too. But my first picture with Photoshop was this one. And it was a uh, really quick picture uh, of Octavia called Falling to Pieces. Because I was listening to a lot of David Guetta's pic, uh, song, She Wolf. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the lyrics. But anyways, yeah, I just quickly did that one just as like a practice thing. It kind of gets and... used to, uh, to the new Photoshop layout instead of using uh, elements. Because it's a little bit different, but a little bit similar too. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, <laughs> all I have to say is there's a difference yet. You know, I like the clouds in your derpy one. It The sketches, they, they look nice to me. Like, Which derpy that's, The derpy's calling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I, I like the clouds. That's the thing. It looks like that um, paintbrush kind of strokes. Oh, yeah. They were just like stroked in there just because I didn't know how to fade it all in. I didn't know how to do the hard lines. When I, actually, I like my... Uh, it's still pretty old and I don't like it now, but I like it better than that other one. It's uh, the other derpy picture, Among the Clouds. Among the, oh, this one. Yeah, that, I like the clouds better in that one than the other one. Ah, uh, yeah. Or even, that clouds looks good. Or even Echo in the Night. Those clouds look pretty good. Well, they look decent for nighttime clouds. Mm, old Echo in the Night, your avatar that you're using now. Yeah, that one. Yeah, looks good. But still, uh, so you started off using with elements, Photoshop elements, and move on to a full version of Photoshop. And you're still using the bamboo? Uh, no, actually, I switched to uh, my full tablet. I mean, my uh, I got a Cintiq, mm-hmm. which I paid for with uh, 
going to Evergreen Northwest. So after the convention, I used that money I made from Evergreen Northwest to go buy myself a Cintiq, which oh, was cool. really nice. First picture of my Cintiq was... Uh, the first picture I did with my Cintiq was that, uh, thanks for, for the support picture, the little liar picture, just like, thanks for 20, 20,000 plus views. So that was the first one with my Cintiq. And then after that, everything after that's been with my Cintiq. That, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, <laughs> it's good to know that you're progressing and having, how do I put this? Um, improve along the way. Yeah. And upgrading. Yep. That's true. Oh, also upgrading so is good. nice having a Cintiq because the Cintiq has a, has a screen on the tablet. So instead of, because oh. before I had to like draw while looking at the screen, not looking at my fingers. So I had to like kind of weird position. So at first it was really weird to get used to and it took me a long time to get used to it. So once I, but once I switched to the Cintiq, it really helps me to try to do like fine details so I can really get into there and get details. Mm. Also doing smooth so, lines. Well, what's, what was the other one? I know there's the bamboo and after the bamboo, there was the, what they call? Oh man, I forgot. Oh, After sin- there's uh, the next upgrade that's well, that's quite a bit cheaper than a, than a uh, Cintiq is the Intuos. Oh yeah, Intuos. I was thinking about the Intuos, but you got yourself a Cintiq that's much better. Yeah, Cintiq is like a like quite a few steps above a, a Intuos, but an Intuos is definitely way better than a uh, bamboo. It has way better mm. pressure sensitivity and it's still fairly cheap. So if anyone wants to get into the drawing, I would suggest either I would suggest an Intuos over bamboo just because bamboo is a little bit cheaper but you're definitely losing quite a bit of quality with that because it doesn't have as much as many pressure sensitivity modes oh true true but i would say that if you're starting out and you got no idea what you're doing you could do one of two things go all out or try something or try it out first because you got no idea if you're gonna go long if you if you get a good offer for a bamboo and it's just like dirt cheap, go ahead. But I mean, like if you're sitting around looking at if you want to buy a bamboo or Intuos, my bamboo capture package it came with like a crappy version of Photoshop, which was just Elements Eight, awful, awful program to draw with. <laughs> that was like ninety bucks altogether. Uh, and in, well, still, an Intuos is about buy. an Intuos is about a hundred bucks, anyways. Oh, go get that one. Exactly. If it's, exactly. If the price difference is just ten bucks, go get that one. Yeah. You, if you can get a game, go get that one. Like, ugh. yeah, pretty much exactly. So. So yeah, I mean that's that debate's over. So yeah, go go get it into yeah, get it into and get like Psy because Psy is free. There's free drawing programs mm-hmm. out there, so just get some free drawing programs. And if you want to get Photoshop later, you totally can. True that. True that. But you don't really need to use Photoshop. There's a lot of other artists out there who use Sai. Sai is a big even... one. Sai is a big mm. one. Mainly because Sai has a, uh, 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 what's it called? Again? Line stabilizer tool. Oh, that's cool. It really helps whenever you're trying to draw a line. It makes it um, smoother. So with Photoshop, though, if I try drawing with it, it'll come out kind of jittery. It might just be my settings. I haven't been able to figure out how to do it. But Photoshop is definitely a way more complicated system because it's made for a lot more things. There's a lot of buttons to it. Sai is a little bit more straightforward. It's also really good for Manga's type style. Mm, there's also Manga Studio. So Manga Studio. If you want to try that. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, if you want to try that one. I know that Atrial uses Sai. He does that a mm. lot. Yeah, I, I've talked to Heather Brackle, the colorist for the Pony Comics, and she said that she might be changing to Manga Studio probably just or try it out yeah. you know so so you have a lot of options out there artists who wants to draw or who if you, is thinking of changing if you have a chance to try out a new program go ahead and try out a new program it's always good for an artist to mix up things up i might actually switch over the side for a while just to go mix things up for a bit because mm-hmm. if you use the same program use the same things for too long you start stagnating and you don't want to just stay the same you want to keep improving you want to keep changing you want to keep learning new things so sometimes just switching around programs and it's enough of a change difference that you start trying new things and you start going outside your little comfort zone of drawing. Mm, that is true. That is true. I totally agree. So now that I'm, I'm still looking at your gallery and whatnot, and uh, I have to ask, what's your inspiration for most of your drawings? Uh, a lot of it's spur of the moment. Like I don't actually do a whole lot of practice sketching. Like Almost every picture I upload is like just the only pictures I draw. Uh, I've done a few sketches recently. Actually, I've started doing a lot more practice sketching and whatnot. But um, 
usually I just go like end of the week, I'll be like, I need to drop a, a pony picture. So I'll just like spend like two days, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours drawing like one picture and then just crash. So for like <laughs> almost another week, I'd, I'd just be sitting around going like, Oh, I don't know if I want to draw anything. And then like end of the next week, I'd be like, Oh, I have another picture. I want to, I need to draw a picture. Hmm. Oh, I got an idea. And then just start drawing, drawing, and drawing, drawing for another two days straight. Wow, that, that, that's awesome. So you don't take commissions, do you? Not right now, but mainly because I'm not very comfortable with it. Because for one thing, um, I'm not. Uh, I spend hours working on pictures. So, like, uh, for example, that Tron picture took me 18, 19 hours to draw total. Wow. Yeah, that many hours wow. put into it to draw. So, if someone's asking for something like that, and they pay me, let's say, forty bucks. For that picture mm-hmm. you know 40 bucks is quite a bit of money uh it, it, true but if you think about it i'm spending let's say 18 hours to get 40 dollars mm, and that's not really worth the cash exactly yeah exactly yeah. now at conventions and, and, i can sling out prints so fast that it's not like i'm just using like pre-made work so at conventions i can usually make quite a good amount of money without spending hours and hours and hours on one thing also, another reason why I avoided doing commissions is because if I spend hours and hours working on a picture, then I can't really resell it a lot of times because a lot of times people want their OCs drawn and nobody wants to buy an OC uh, after the commission's done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally understandable. Totally understandable. Like, there's very few times you can sell an OC. Well, you can sell OCs as long as they're really the popular ones, like yeah. Fufflepuff or any Fluffle convention a, ponies. Yeah, that type of thing. Like convention ponies, Fufflepuff, sometimes actually just random OCs that people have drawn. But the drawing mm-hmm. was so cool and like really looks great that it, people are like, you know what, I'd buy a picture of that. You know, like the popular ones, the popular ones. Well, I mean, not just popular ones. But I mean, like if you actually make art that looks super cool for like some OC, then it's like some people are just like, you know what? I'll buy a, I'll buy a picture of that just because it looks so good. Like the artwork for it is just so good. I, I'm okay with that it being an OC picture. But a lot of times people want to buy fan art for whatever favorite pony they have or favorite character because they're drawing, they want fan art. Well, totally understandable. Sometimes OC don't sell well, but ah, eh, oh well. I could probably so- sell that. That okay. I did. I did a as a as a pre before uh, Elements of Harmony. Uh, one of the, the Elements of Harmony pictures I did that day was a picture of Forced Rain, and mm-hmm. the host of the show Infinite. I drew him as, a, as like Nappy. Mm, okay. Because everyone was always talking about how Force just pops in and starts telling everyone, going, "Hey, hey, listen, guys. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, listen." So, so we start calling Infinite Nappy. <laughs> so I drew Infinavi with the host of the show Forest as Link. I could probably sell that one just because it's Link. Yeah, I'll, I'll totally. This looks awesome, and at the same time, it's a Forest Rain. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> forest Rain. I mean, come on, everyone knows Forest Rain. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> sellable. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the that's <laughs> one of the few sellable uh, OC pictures I could probably sell. Mm-hmm. And also uh, another one I'm looking here is like. Um, Ponies and Panzer. Ponies and Panzer. Yeah, that one. Yep. Actually, I've been wanting to draw a pony tank picture ever since I started watching Girls in Panzer. Oh god! And then no. I saw t- uh, I saw Antiquar Ponies, uh, Trots of War before I even watched pon- uh, Girls in Panzer <laughs> too. And I was like, dude, that looks so cool. This anti uh, Antiquar Pony he draws uh, shady as lighting. And, ah, Oh, I know Anti Anti is awesome. Senpai Senpai noticed me like Anti Anti draw my Osai. <laughs> Anti's a good Anti's a really good artist. Yep, yep. He is okay. He's he's a he's a good guy. But yeah, I mean yeah, it's, ponies it's... and panzers. Like oh my friends ah I've been hanging out with a friend who has that soundtrack in the car and oh god, I just love the soundtrack. <laughs> the the soundtrack for girls and panzer? Yep. Yeah, that's that's kind of, I was listening to Kaichusa Kaichu Kaichusha. So. Kirusha, yeah, yeah, I was listening like, to oh, that, like that's... nonstop when I was drawing. Like, I know. <laughs> like that was like the nonstop thing that would just pop up in my music library all the time. I'm like, I'd be listening to something else. I'm like, no, 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 this doesn't fit. Switch back to that song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one more thing. A fun fact that I read about that song was, yeah, they they changed the song to the Tetris song, the Korobe Korobeniki. I don't know why. I think it's because of. Uh, difference in copyright be- copyright law between Japan and the US blah 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 so those kind of songs those kind of stuff copyright yay ah, I, I would guess that print would go out well man 
Yeah, it would go really well at a convention. It's just one of those concepts that everyone's like, I'd want that hanging up on my wall. <laughs> yeah. Or true, true. make it into a playmat or something. Oh, that would be awesome. So, before I move on, like you, you mentioned conventions and whatnot, and I can't help but uh, notice that you mentioned our friend of the show, Everfree Northwest. So you've been there? Oh yeah, uh, that's that's the convent. That's the closest convention to me. Um, it's like mm-hmm. in state, so it's like a five hour drive over the Everfree Northwest, or just like a half an hour plane trip. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's like right across the state from me, so it's like my home convention pretty much, and. So I've I've started getting to know a lot of the, the staff that works there too. There's some really cool people that work on staff over at Free Northwest. It's a good it's a good con. Good to know, good to know. Because we well, technically I myself can't do much because of the location that I'm oh, in. Oh yeah. But I would so want to go, man. I bet. So are um, you going so are you going this year? This or next year? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's going to be on May 9th to 31st at the Hilton Seattle Airport and Conference Center, Seattle, Washington. Plug. Plug, plug, plug. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, they actually moved it away. They used to be doing on 4th of July weekend for like a couple of years now. Mm. Um, but they finally got a time slot outside of that, which really helps a lot of people to go. So it should be even way bigger than it was last year, which was fairly big. It was like 1,800 people. Oh, so that's still good, man. That's still good. From what I heard, a lot of people were really happy. And the ticket price for next year is going to be $55 for three days. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, it was three days. They actually, like, uh, um, like the con badges at Everfree last year were way better than even Brony Con's badges. Like, they had these really cool con badges for Everfree Northwest. Mm, that's cool. So, are you going there as a vendor this year? Yeah, definitely. I went as a vendor last year, too. Oh. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I, because if I'm not mistaken, um, you can apply to become a vendor now, if I remember right. Yeah, they, I think they released it to the general public. Um, uh, as a vendor from last year, uh, they gave me a uh, uh, a little bit of a heads up notice. Uh, no, no, no. Why I no, that's wrong. They actually sent out panel submissions. So if you have a panel that you want to do, you can submit it. Submit it. Mm-hmm. But as for now, no calling for vendors oh, okay. but since you vendored last year so you get more info yeah yeah and also i think i think the guy who uh, runs the uh, vendor staff i'm friends with him on facebook now we kind of follow each other better now and whatnot we, get, we, we talk a little bit online he's a cool dude <laughs> so i think he was mostly just going through all the uh, vendor names before and just kind of remembering okay this guy was kind of cool this guy was really annoying this person was doing pretty well <laughs> yeah that type all of thing right. like who actually interacted well with the convention type. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. So tell me, tell tell me. Like, I I need to know. I, I need to know offhand what well, how was the convention and stuff. Like, how was your experience? Uh, Everfree Northwest was fantastic. Same thing with BronyCon. I was way busier in BronyCon because it's so much more massive, and mm-hmm. uh, there was a lot more going on. There was a lot bigger vendor hall too, so I had to like really make sure it was cleaned up and like locked up because I didn't want anyone messing around with my stuff. But ever for Northwest, it was a little bit more easy. It was a little bit easier to keep track of. Like uh, they just locked it up afterwards. So from a vendor's point of view, uh, that's pretty awesome. Brodycon was a nightmare from, from a vendor's point of view because it was 255 vendors at at, at Brodycon. And then at Evergreen Northwest, it was maybe 50. So not much competition then. Yeah, that's cool. which is good. But also, um, since it was a smaller vendor hall, afterwards, I could run around and just kind of do print trades with people easier. At uh, BronyCon, it's a little bit harder to do. Mm. That's what Andy did at Brony, no, not Brony, but um, Buck this year. He printed a few prints and you want to do trades? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Tr- print trades are a big viable thing. I mean, like, uh, although since it's just prints, I kind of didn't want to, like, mm-hmm. be trying to get a whole lot out of it. Like, I know some mm-hmm. people go around the conventions, they go like, hey, can I trade a couple prints for a plushie? No, you no, dude. That's no, like that's God, like no. d bag move there. No, you don't do that. You trade paper with paper. You don't trade cloth with paper. That's no. I know that. You trade like uh, at, yeah, yeah. You trade paper for paper. You do like actual legitimate valuable things to to each other. Yeah. Um, I know that I got a three D printed uh painted pony. Uh, it was Doctor oh, Who's. Fig- cool. I got a Doctor Who's figurine from uh from some guys for uh, a couple prints. Like it was like eight prints or something like that, so it was almost equal value to what it was. It's just that the guy who who gave it to me was uh, uh, he's like, you know what, I'd be willing to give it to you for a bunch of prints because he didn't like how it came out as far as painting. I can't still see a lot of 
issues with it, but you know, mm-hmm. that's just artist well, he, artist preferences. Yeah, he's the creator then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know I did a lot of print trading with uh, people at the convention, like I did with Dark Plane, um, with Leak Fish. Leak Fish always goes around every like almost everyone's vendor booth and at least grabs a couple of things that she really, really likes, and then she'll just trade prints with people. Oh, that's awesome! That's awesome. Leak Fish likes just collecting art. Oh, that's cool. I, I've heard the name. Of, I heard uh, Lick Fisher being around, so that's cool. And for Evercore Northwest, I spent actually Evercore Northwest uh, the, the week before the convention. Uh, I was watching QDR Crusaders because I met QDR Crusaders on uh, Evercore Northwest 2013. I was mm-hmm. I was handing out prints for free uh, in 2013 because oh, cool. I didn't want to be a vendor. I probably could have been a vendor. I wasn't super good in 2013, um, mm-hmm. but I was decent. But I didn't want to be trying to push my luck with being a vendor, and I'd rather just enjoy the convention. But I wanted to kind of mm-hmm. test the waters, see how some of my prints do, what concepts people really like, and also because they want to give people free free prints. People are like, oh my gosh, this is super cool! So if they like it, they get free stuff, and it plugs me a little bit, and then I can also test waters for things. So win win win. Anyways, oh, true, true, true. so when I was handing out free prints, um, uh, I ran into Burn, mm-hmm. Burn from Peter Crusaders. I sent him uh, a Twilight picture. Um, if you go to my gallery, if you look at the looking back picture, the one oh, yeah, the before two. and after, I saw that one. the first yeah. one I sent to, to Burn, and I, because uh, they were saying, like, if you want some critique on some pictures, go feel free to do it. Most of our friends in my town that I knew locally mm-hmm. would just always say, oh, yeah, this is super great artwork. Like, I want to critique. I want to know how I can do better. So I emailed them saying, hey, uh, I'd love to have some critique over this picture. Um, rip it to pieces. I don't care. Tear it a new one. Just tell me what I can do better about it. So he went and threw together a whole mm-hmm. video just showing all the different things like about it that he liked, that he didn't like, and whatnot. Um, and so when I was at Evercore Northwest, I pulled out that print and I was like, hey, remember this picture? He's like, wait a minute, you're the one that did that? I was like, yeah. He's like, dude, that's awesome. So they go and interview me <laughs> on the spot. Wow. I was like, what? <laughs> so they interviewed me there. <laughs> Like, so you just hand out prints? I'm like, yeah. So they just, like, took a bunch of my old, old, old prints. I mean, they probably have prints that don't even exist anymore. Like, I know that, that some of them have prints that you cannot, that I won't ever print ever again because I hate those pictures too much. <laughs> so, they, so they interview you and critique you on the spot? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So I started... Oh, why? Kind of, yeah. It's, it's fine. I was completely cool with that. So that's how I got to know the cuter Crusaders and then kind of got pulled into their group with that. So every three twenty fourteen rolls around. The week just before the uh, the con starts, I was watching their episode, uh, watching an episode, and I was talking with the Flutter guy in in uh, the IRC, mm-hmm. watching the live stream of it. And uh, he was like, "Oh yeah," it's like, "Hey, what's up, Ariel? Yeah, do you want to get a hold of us for the con? Just uh, contact us on Twitter." I was like, "Oh, I don't have a Twitter, so I guess I'll start up a Twitter." I started up a Twitter, and then after convention season, somehow I have seventy one followers. What? I know. I was like, I, it's like I only started this this Twitter account just to go and get in contact with Flutter Guy and Burn for the, for the cons. <laughs> I blame Flutter Guy for this. I tweet. I tweet now. What the heck? <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So, uh, I'm guessing that going to this going to every free Northwest has been a real blast. Oh, every free North was awesome. Um. Oh yeah, and that uh, picture, Price of Immortality, the new version of that old picture. That was actually, I said that's burned again the, with the new version. He was actually looking over my shoulder while I was like sharing my screen on Skype and he would just be giving mm-hmm. me uh, uh, things to go and fix about it. Like plug in your things to go do it. Like, he gave me like an extra five hours of work on it pretty much, <laughs> which I'm totally okay with because it turned out amazing. Mm-hmm. So Burn really was helping me out with that. And then I made a special print of it, uh, which I took to BrodyCon for the charity auction. If you go to, I will actually link you a picture of because I took a picture of it with my crappy phone, so it doesn't look super good. But it was at the mm-hmm. BrodyCon 2014 charity auction. The thing sold for really well. I was really surprised because it's just a print. Like, I mean, it's the number one print out of some limited edition prints I made because I wanted to make it limited edition. Mm-hmm. But I was surprised how well it did. Oh, cool. So, how much did it oh, go? Oh, it went for $825. <laughs> Oh wow! It had an amazing frame. Like I spent probably eighty bucks on that frame, but totally worth it for charity. Yeah, for charity. Awesome. It was a really nice frame. Like holy cow, that frame was amazing. I would. Yeah, I'm looking at it now, and oh my goodness, that that looks. Good. I was walking around the convention with that the day, like the day before the convention started, trying to figure out where to drop it off, and like 
people looking at it. Mm-hmm. And like, there were several people like, wait a minute, give me that up on a charity auction. I'll give you 250 mm-hmm. for it right now. <laughs> no. I was like, but it's for charity. It's for the children. Just go and donate it. Since you're the ch- it's for the children. <laughs> can't be taking it away from the children. So... <laughs> well, at least money in your pocket. It is. Yay. Although that picture did but... sell quite well at the convention. I probably made it. I probably oh. made one K just from that one picture. <laughs> well, at least how do I put this? Um, at least your you, people are liking what you're doing, so thumbs up there. Yeah, that was it's probably one of my best pictures so far, as far as quality goes. So maybe the next step is playmat. Maybe that'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> I, I might make that into a playmat. Although I don't know, people don't really care too much for having feels looking at them every time they go and try playing a card on the table. <laughs> <laughs> they looked at them like yeah, I will probably- play. Aww. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, probably. Let me play my card. I will now summon Pinky. Oh, man, this picture is depressing. <laughs> Anyways, I will now play. Aww. <laughs> uh, if, if it were me, if it, if, if no fields, I'll go for the pony and panzer. That'll be funny. Or because the Tron, I'm right? gonna dominate or you. The Tron picture. That, that um, picture was my best top seller between both conventions. Easily. Mm, the Tron th- pony picture, the grid. Oh, that one, yeah. That, that one, dude, that one looks good. That one looks good. As a playmat. I would make it into a playmat. Mm, yeah. People love that yeah, picture that... like nothing else. Like, oh my gosh, people love that picture. Like, oh, it looks like good. Like at Evergreen good. Northwest 2014, um, Dark Flame and Doritos were sharing a booth on the first day. And mm-hmm. I was going around to all the booths afterwards, just kind of meeting some of the other people in the vendor hall and just talking a little bit. And then, um, I, be- I casually mentioned that, like, yeah, my Tron Pony picture's been selling like nuts. And they're like, wait a minute, you're the one that made the Tron Pony's picture? I'm like, yeah? <laughs> like, because we had, like, a bunch of people coming by here. And they're like, hey, is this where we can get Tron Pony pictures? We were told this is where we can get Tron Pony <laughs> pictures. And they're like, no. <laughs> and they get a little disappointed and walk away. And they're like, so it's all your fault. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I-, I think if you're going to go to Everfree Northwest again, you should try something new then, like Tron again, but with maybe um, who works well? Probably uh, <laughs> I got no idea. Like vinyl is really good. The blue and black well, and have, white really works well. I have that. a really really good idea for every free Northwest charity auction next year. Uh, basically, oh, I'm going to get two prints the size of that Twilight print picture, that brain mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get two of those. But those are going to be portrait side. They're going to be portrait pictures. And it's going to be side by side mm. in a frame where it's going to be Octavia playing on a, on an electric violin in Tron style. And it's going to be uh-huh. vinyl scratch in Tron style on the other side. And it's just going to be, it's oh. going to be two prints, two massive portrait size prints inside of one frame. So it's going to be one massive frame. Oh god. The, the, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for it either. I really want to get started on drawing it. I was too busy working on some other projects like that. Pony Zoom Panzer, which was a contest. Mm. The Ponies picture is actually a, uh, Panzer picture is actually a contest entry for every pretty Northwest. I had, to, oh, that's I had cool. to get it done for the end of the month. And then I started working on another so... project, which is a secret project I can't reveal until <laughs> Christmas. It's, it's cool. It's cool. So any news on the results? On no? the results of what? None? The contest? Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't hear back until uh, at least the end of the month. It's not even the end of the month. I was surprised I got it done as fast as I did. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's, it's because cool, I stay up till six in the morning working on it. That's right. Yeah, that's the life of an artist. But you know what you mentioned about um, doing uh, playmats and whatnot? I'm looking at some of your arts and I don't mind using them as playmats. I would, I would turn some of those into playmats, yeah. Maybe that Lyra picture. Lyra picture. The, the gear picture. Can, um... That's fine. The Lyra, where she's just mm. walking through the cloud, like walking through. Well, I don't even know what it is. I, Philly memory? Yeah. Uh, Philly hood. I did, I did. Actually, the picture just started off as like, it was supposed to be just a one hour sketch practice. Of course, it turns, <laughs> yeah, of right. course it turns into eight hours. I don't <laughs> yeah. even know. But still, looks good. Looks good. I was like, you know what? I really like Lyra with a bow on her tail. It looks super adorable. And start way too <laughs> far with it. Yeah, the pinky spy one, that could. Be a really good phone cover. Yeah, if I could get if it's fine, I'll just get it. That's actually a good idea. I should look into that. Mm. Yay, more ideas, more swag. Yeah, swag. Now I must spend. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out more things than just prints on the table. I mean, prints I can do. I've done really well just selling prints, considering that's the only thing I mm-hmm. had available. But I want to get more things on my table, than just prints. Mm, more options, more option selects. More things. All right. There's so much we can talk about. Like, uh, there's so many options. Like, um. 
UN conventions, you and your prints and whatnot, because uh, we're having a blast talking about what you could do with your prints. Oh, yeah. So how about this? Uh, find a picture in my gallery and you can, that you really okay. like and you want to know more about it. You can do that. Oh, okay. So let me see. Okay. I, hmm, the Elements of Harmony, April Fool's. So, yeah. You're just wondering behind the background story of that. That was, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was an interesting one. That was a uh, fan art for their episode, their April Fool's episode, where they did like a, uh, mm-hmm. they recorded together and like they made some dumb visuals for a really, really hilarious and really stupid April Fool's episode where they made their own music for it too. <laughs> like they made some parody music and whatnot. Super hilarious. Like, oh my gosh, so hilarious. I mean, I, I could sit down and uh, that's one of the few Elements Army episodes I'll actually go back and actually watch on YouTube, not just the live stream. But it was definitely way funnier on the live stream, but it's still super hilarious just watching it again. It's, oh, oh my gosh, so it was hilarious. That, that picture sums up the entire episode, by the way. Tim being passed out with a, with a uh, mug in his hand, drinking oat cider. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Dylan with his, with his mini fridge, because everyone loves Dylan with his mini fridge. Because <laughs> he, because it was a comedy made on the show, it was like uh, he asked, he was like, "Why would you want a bass guitar so we can have a mini fridge?" That's like the same thing. So they start asking people, <laughs> it's like bass guitar or mini fridge. It's like the fridge. question they ask people, like whenever they have a guest on the show, that's always what they ask him now. <laughs> so Dylan's thing he has on his podcast is that he has a, his mini fridge. Zeta falling asleep because Zeta always falls asleep during episodes, and then Slip throws in the middle, <laughs> just being the only sane person, just face hooking as he's like, "Oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? You guys are retarded." <laughs> and then Forrest is like getting angry at, at Snow as Snow's making fun of Forrest and then Infinite's just flying in the background going hey listen hey hey listen hey listen guys <laughs> and then we have Larsus's goldfish breaching out of the water because the end of the episode uh, the end of the episode Larsus's goldfish comes out of nowhere because he's always mentioning stuff about his goldfish speaking jokes about his goldfish so at the end of the episode uh, his goldfish comes out of nowhere and you just see all the hosts just sitting there and they're like uh, his goldfish is like yes all Elvis Ari hosts you'll be safe Pop into my gills. <laughs> it's like this whole Morgan uh, Freeman thing. So everyone in the chat was mentioning, was saying like, "Oh my gosh, it's a magic carp!" <laughs> so drew a giant magic carp reaching out of the water behind them. Oh, that that is a story there. Oh my, so awesome. Yeah, that's if if you ever want anything that sums up the entire podcast, that does it very well. Magic carp, yeah, carp, carp, magic carp. <laughs> <laughs> Still awesome, awesome. So, well, <laughs> besides my show, you should check that one out too. I mean, but still check my show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there's so many podcasts I need to keep up with. Like, uh, Your OC Sucks. I know uh, all the people who run that too. And I I can't keep up with it all too. I barely keep up with Elements of Harmony. Every week. I sometimes can watch QDR Crusaders, not always. Mm, true, true. I mean, but sometimes the uh, there's a lot of things, and sometimes there's too much things, and no, not enough. Time. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm, not to mention, mm-hmm. since I'm the so, only fan artist for Elements of Harmony, I kind of like have like all the all the the, the fan artness to it. Like I own that. That's like my thing, pretty much. <laughs> no one else has stepped in to go be like, "Oh, I'm gonna draw fan art for the Elements of Harmony too." <laughs> Don't you dare! Well, what, okay, if I did like uh, fan art for like QDR Crusaders. Um, there's a lot of fan art for Kitty Crusaders, so I'd be competing a lot with a lot of good artists too. So I guess it's also just kind of a thing that I can just feel free to go and like do dumb pictures and not feel like I have to like compete with other people. So I can have a little bit more fun with it. I'm looking at one picture that you did, the Power Ponies. So that's done in traditional? Yes, actually, uh, that's the old picture of it. I still haven't gotten the other picture. Uh, that was at a convention locally here in town. Um, they oh. brought Stan Lee to come into town. Oh, awesome! Was it uh, Kamikaze? Kamikaze, Comic Con type, yeah. It's uh, it was called PacCon. Oh, okay. It's like the Pacific Northwest Northwest's con. It wasn't that mm-hmm. good as far as the con goes. I mostly went just so that I can take this picture and have Stan Lee sign it for charity auction at BronyCon next year. Oh, so did yeah. he? Oh so, man, you need to shoot an update. I, yeah, I had a friend um at the con mm-hmm. go and take a picture of it with a really nice uh. A really nice camera, not just my little phone camera. I might have to, I'd, I'd have to go to my Facebook and actually find the uh, picture that has the signature on it. Um, in the meantime, anyways, uh, so I was at the, I was working on that that picture like pretty late at night, mm-hmm. trying to get it done before Saturday because that was the last day. Stanley mm-hmm. was gonna be there. Go and ask him to go and see if he'd be able to sign it. So he did see, mm-hmm. uh, his manager did did say, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. You know, sign it for charity auction. That'd be fine. So goes and signs it, and now I have a picture of our 
It's with Stan Lee's signature on it. Yeah, here it is. Oh, okay. So did did he uh, mention anything? Uh, Stan Lee? Yeah, he kind of looked yeah. at it, and he's like, huh, that's kind of interesting. I never had that one given me. Oh, man. Oh, that's, oh, that's so cool. Oh, man. Wow. So <laughs> I just can't wait for the charity auction to oh, happen. Oh, it's like, because I, I, when I heard that Stan Lee was coming to town, I was like, wait a minute. Nobody has Stan Lee's signature in the fandom. Like, hardly anyone would have Stan Lee's signature in the fandom. And Stan Lee was, like, one of the biggest influences for that episode. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? That'd be a really cool charity auction idea because no one really had it. So I did to come up with an idea for something for Stan Lee to go sign because, yeah, no one has his has the signature. So it probably it might go, actually, for really well at the charity auction. Awesome. So have you decided which one? Everfree North West or BronyCon? Uh, I'm going to bring it to BronyCon. Because uh, right. Brony because every Brony Northwest has a lot bigger Comic Con uh, group. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, uh, there's not as many people going. Well, like Brony Con has like mm-hmm. ten thousand people going. So with that many people competing, it might actually go for a lot more. I just I don't care which mm-hmm. convention it goes to, as long as it just sells better for charity. Yeah, because in the end, it goes to the charity event. Yeah, I mean, so, I yeah. like Evergreen Northwest. I love the staff, and it's probably my more favorite con just because it's here in town and the staff better. I do know some staff for mm-hmm. BronyCon too, and they're pretty cool people. But um, yeah, I mean, I I do like Evergreen Northwest, but I'd rather see it just do well as a charity piece than just do, put it into a con I, I like. Mm, true, true. I totally agree. I totally agree. So yeah, <laughs> that, but, that, I make, but wow. I'm making it up. To, I'm making it up to Evergreen Northwest. So I'm doing that massive Tron final scratch and, and Octavia the portrait thing. Oh yeah, totally man. I like I said, I can't wait to look at that. Like, oh boy, spoilers everywhere. I might, I might actually do all the main six Tron ponies and just do individual portraits of them all and maybe match them up. I might do that instead. I don't know. I've, I've been I've... that that would be awesome and put it in a massive uh, frame. I mean, like I'd, I'd cut it all together. Like I cut together all the pictures and it's like just showing part of them and then like. That oh. holds like one picture. Like you know how they have some of them, uh, wallpapers where it's just like showing like one half of the ponies, and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. type of wallpaper style. I might do that instead. I don't know. I'm deciding in between if I'd rather draw six ponies or two ponies. Well, uh, it's up to you. But what I can see is it will look good because <laughs> everyone loves the Tron concept. I mean, holy cow, people love that Tron concept. <laughs> Well, I hope you do well in uh, the cons that you'll be going in. I, I hope I can get to the cons. That's... I mean, like, I still don't know if I'm going to be able to go to the Babs con. It's, it's, I can only go to a con if I can if I get a vendor position. That's uh, what pays for the con. Hmm. Except for Everfree Northwest. Mm-hmm. That one's so close that I could just I could just uh, split costs with people here in town. And most people, I could probably just pay, like, maybe 100 bucks for it. All right. Well, that's still awesome. That's still awesome. And you, <laughs> I've run out of questions because I'm... I'm impressed. Like I'm looking at your gallery, and it's really awesome. It's I'm really not awesome. the best person at art in the world. I'm going to admit that right here. I'm not like a, I still have a lot of stuff. I'm always learning. Like every picture, I'm usually struggling with something. Like uh, sometimes mm-hmm. I just spend hours working on stupid dumb things, or you're just doing simple flushes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well that's that's the thing with artists because uh, they they're their own worst critics. Oh, yeah. That's the thing. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, that's why I do like a lot of looking back pictures, like that, uh, like comparing the old, Octa- I mean, uh, Twilight picture with Twilight. the Ocarina to the new Twilight picture with Ocarina. I can obviously say, yes, I am improving. I still won't say I'm a very good artist just because I still have a lot I need to learn. That is true. That is true. And well, t- keep it up, man. Keep it up. You, you've earned a follower today. That'd be cool. That's cool. Every follower is appreciated. I, I love every mm-hmm. single one of my watchers because if it wasn't for all my watchers, I probably wouldn't still be arty. I probably would have given up a while ago. Mm-hmm. True that, true that. So, anywho, Adriel, thank you for answering my questions. And I have officially run out of questions. I'm just impressed. Like, right now, I can just brainstorm ideas of what you can sell and vend the tables. If you have any more questions about any other pictures, feel free if you want fit that in or something. If, if anything comes along, I'll try and slot it in. But as for now, I have... Ran out of questions. Okay, no problem. Sorry about no problem. that, man. So, anywho, uh, thank you, Angel. So, where where can they find you? Where can they find oh, you? Oh, mostly DeviantArt. I mean, I started using, I started up a Tumblr. I actually started up a while ago, apparently. I never really used it. Um, but mm-hmm. mainly it's just ardale.deviantArt.com. Oh, I can't speak. 
I know that feeling like, too. Da, da, so, da, da. Any, yeah, I'll just link it in the show notes. I'll just link it in the show okay. notes. Okay. Yeah, it's mainly where you can usually find me. I mean, I am on Twitter. I kind of tweet once in a while, and I'll tweet some work in progress pictures on Twitter, or I'll tweet like a few things once in a while. And I kind of started using the Tumblr, but other than I mostly mainly use art, uh, deep art right now. Do you do any live streams about your I art? I tried a few times. My computer, I have a really, I just have a laptop. So it has a hard time trying to render mm. Photoshop oh, and God. also trying it's to live stream time. and also trying to uh, run a, yeah. uh, 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 call because a lot of times it's just boring watching me just sitting there drawing. And like, is it... uh, so is it dying then? <laughs> so I haven't really tried live streaming because it's like, I can, I can't really rent. I can't really, when I tried drawing with trying to run all those things, and usually I'll try drawing. It'll just take it a few seconds before it finally actually renders. Oh, like, <laughs> screw this. <laughs> Totally understandable, totally understandable. So, once I get a better so, computer, then I should do a live stream. So if anything else, I'll just put in the show notes so people can find you and follow you. Go follow Adriel on his DeviantArt. His art is really awesome. And yeah, commission him if you want because I'm thinking of something. I'll probably do a playmat. <laughs> <laughs> so but anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And it's news time. Will you be able to join me? Yeah, sure. That's fine. Awesome. Yay, I'm not alone then. Yay. <laughs> uh, okay. But anywho, on to news time. And in today's news time, My Little Pony comic now available on Humble Comic Bundle. Have you ever wanted to get the My Little Pony comics but were a bit short on cash? Well, now is your chance to get them with the help of the Humble Comic Bundle. For a limited time only, here's your chance to get the My Little Pony comics. For as low as a penny, you can get the My Little Pony Friends Forever issue 1 to 5 and the My Little Pony Micro issue 1 to 10. And if you pay more than the average of $13.56, you can get the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic issue 1 to 12 and the My Little Pony Friendship Three. And the Molly, and the My Little Pony Friends Forever issue six to ten. If you were to pay fifteen dollars or more, you can get the entire collection. Links can be found in the show notes. So yeah, cheap comics. This is a real. This is a must buy. This is a must buy. You heard me, James and Silver Quill, talk about the comics. Now uh, here's your chance to get them. And whew, Adriel, do you read the comics? Uh, I have like the first three, four issues, and then the Shining Armor issues. I just haven't really been paying for all the comics. I'd rather physically own them, but I don't really have the cash to be paying for all the comics. Well, here's your chance. Like, 15 bucks to get all of them digitally, um, DRM-free, multiple formats, and pay what you want. Why not, right? I know, but still, I like physically owning my comic books. Mm. Like, I like actually having it in my hands so I can just, they just read it. I don't know. It's just, just personal preference, really. Mm, true. Purist. But, eh, it's, you know... Some people out there don't mind digital formats. As for me, I am limited to what I yeah, have. Yeah, I mean, digital. That's all you can afford. Feel free, go ahead. I mean, I'm not judging anyone who does that. I just, I just prefer it. That's all. It's preference then, but still, um, for anyone out there who don't really mind, fifteen bucks get the whole thing and more to come. Like, whew, uh, if you want to keep out on the comics, go ahead, go ahead. So, how have you been enjoying the comics? Oh, uh, I. Uh, they're super hilarious and they're awesome. I mean, oh my gosh, those references. Like, you read through the comics first for all the story, and then you read through it again just mm-hmm. to go pick out all the little tiny references they stick into the background. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy so And then much. you read it like, again because um, you see even more references. Oh, yeah. Mm, they're so good, man. They're so good. Like, like you mentioned the Shining Armor arc, right? Yes, that was like one of my favorite arcs. It's so hilarious. Oh. I just love the story of how they got together. That was a really oh, good so one. amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so awesome. <laughs> oh, did you get a chance to read the big back? No, arc? I haven't read that one. Oh, go get it. If you can go get it because it's really good. I heard that too. Like all the arcs are super awesome. Like some of, like I know the big Mac one was like one of the especially good ones. Mm-hmm. Shiny Armor Kate and Kate one was also really good. And if you don't mind uh, diverting from the main story, you could go for the micros. Like um, the Luna micro, I heard, is pretty good. And so is the Rarity micro. Oh, yeah, I've seen those. Um, and they also do one about like the QDR Crusaders and Discord. Mm, the QDR Crusaders. That's the Friends Forever issue number two. And also in the main story for issue 24, that involves Fluttershy too. And in issue 24, there's the TARDIS. It's bigger on the outside and smaller on the inside. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, if you have the chance, go go get it. But yeah, 
comics aside, uh, if you listeners, if you enjoy it and if you want to get the whole collection fast, fifteen dollars, go ahead. Moving on to the next news. And the final one on the list is Daniel Ingram puts the finishing touches on Rainbow Dash's epic solo. Recently, Daniel Ingram posted a tweet saying that he was reviewing the final mix for Rainbow Dash's epic solo song in hashtag My Little Pony Season 5. Will it, be, will it be a long song? Will it be a rock and roll song? Whatever it is, expect it to be 20% awesome. Links can be found in the show notes. So yeah, Rainbow Dash has a solo. I think this would be her first solo in ever. Pretty much. I mean, she did like uh, some Senior and Find a Pet, but I don't think she's really had a solo. Maybe in Rainbow Rocks, that's about it. Kind of, really, but eh. All in all. But still, phew, I can't wait. Like, <laughs> the, the possibilities of songs out there, like, what will really it be? Rock and roll? I don't know. Actually, it, it could be men. It could be a number of things. Uh, could even be like a um, folk song. Even I don't even know. You never know. You never quite know. Danny Lingram you know, uh, is pretty good at putting together some music for uh, every episode. True that. True that. And he never disappoints. He never disappoints in terms of music. Nope. So I just can't wait. Oh, hoping for the best. Hoping for the best. Actually, I really, really, really like Raise This Bar. And even though everyone kind of makes fun of it and like the lyrics aren't super complicated, who cares? It wasn't about the lyrics. Oh, the song was not ever supposed to be written for the lyrics. It's written for the music itself. True that. True that. Like Raise This Barn. It was a pretty awesome song. I like it. But some people, you know, it sounds like that one thing that should not be mentioned. Well, it's, but, it's yeah. mainly because like a lot of times people want songs they can kind of sing to. And they want like lyrics mm-hmm. they can sing to. The song isn't really for singing to the lyrics. It's mostly just kind of listening to. Because Ashley Ball's mm-hmm. voice was harmonizing with the music so well. But it wasn't like mm-hmm. she wasn't singing to the point where like she was like, you know, we hear the band. She was just singing to harmonize with the song specifically. Mm, true that and also um, Apples to the Core if you remember that yeah, one that was, that was, a, good, one that was a good song too that's some good harm so yeah good harm then Ingram knows what he's doing so I don't have to worry but cool. just speculate on what, what song what kind of song he would do he's definitely a really good songwriter that's for sure mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, you, you remember Rainbow Rocks when um, I'm Awesome <laughs> yeah yeah uh, that's a good one, but yeah, egotistic much, Rainbow? <laughs> Just a little, but you know, that's kind of also because it's uh, making reference to anyone who actually has a band, and uh, the, lead, <laughs> the lead guitarist, lead singer is usually pretty egotistical. Since he's the face of the, of the band, usually, then uh, they kind of let, they kind of goes their head really fast because since they have tons of fans. Uh, it also reminds me of that one Eminem song, My Band. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but still, can't wait, can't wait. So season five is on its way, finishing touches and oh, whatnot. Yeah. yeah, I mean, sure we have long hiatus, but to me, I don't really care because I'm just going to keep drawing fan art with or without the show. Mm-hmm. True that, true that. Uh, you you are one of the people that is helping the fandom flourish. <laughs> keep going during the, uh, the hiatus. Yes, the long ponyless hi- summer of hiatus. You just come up with a cr- crazy pony crossover. <laughs> yeah, that's time. true. I would play some soul carver. I'm like, hmm, this needs a pony <laughs> crossover. Uh, yep, <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, I've been playing Bayonetta. Somebody needs to do that. <laughs> you guys should do a pony crossover. Kirby mm, Air yep, Riders. Yep, yep. <laughs> that might need to happen. This might need to happen. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things you can do. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. With fan art, yeah, the sky's the limit of your mm, imagination. That is also but... true. So, anywho, that's news time. And I'm going to end it here. The, there's no more news to talk about. So, moving on to the next topic is shout outs. And, Adriel, thank you for coming on, man. Um, you have been an awesome guest. Well, thank you. Blow my mind. Art so good. Must do something with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that good. Auntie's uh, definitely better than I it's am. It's not fair to compare yourself with anyone. You are your own uh, worst critic. And I like your art. I like your art. Well, thank you very much. I'm just the, uh, let me put on these hipster glasses really quickly. I'm the, uh, you've never heard of me uh, person. Uh, no comment there. <laughs> but anyway, um, thank you for coming on, man. Thank you for coming on. And also thank you, audience, who are listening to me right now, rambling alone and with Adriel at the side here. Thank you for listening to us bantering on. Uh, thank you. <laughs> That's all I have to say. So, Adriel, any shout outs do you want to give out to? Any shout outs? Uh, let's see here. Captain Pudge is mm-hmm. a really funny guy. If you like super comedic artwork, he's really funny. And he's also just really hilarious to hang out with and just 
mess around with. Elements of Harmony people were super cool. Same thing with Q Dirt Crusaders. Also, your OC sucks. It's a very good OC sucks. Too. Yeah. yeah. That one's a really hilarious one, actually. All right, all right. And they actually do pretty good with uh, trying to talk about different OC designs. Like, what makes a really good OC design? What makes it really annoying type of thing? Or what makes it really good for uh, plushing? And what makes it really annoying for plushing? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That type of thing. So they actually do a pretty good job with that show. Awesome. <laughs> even though it's not even... It's not, it doesn't have its own network. It just runs on YouTube. That's mm. about it. Uh, well, everyone must try like what I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty much. Indeed. You gotta start and somewhere. Hope you get picked up. Yeah, pretty much. It just depends if you make your break or not. Like it, 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 get your get your break or not. Pretty much. Especially how the fandom's going right now. Like early fandom, uh, people like Mando Pony and whatnot were like some of the only musicians. So if anyone wanted Pony music, there was only like mm-hmm. a couple musicians to go to. So then as the fandom starts expanding and people start converting their friends to the fandom, then they just show them like their favorite music, which is Mando Pony. So that's why Mando Pony and all the first people in the fandom drawing art, doing things like that, are super popular now. Because as the fandom grows, they grow mm, with the true, fandom. That is true. It's a situation where first come, first serve, and ooh, this is good. Think of it this mm-hmm. way, if I use an analogy. It's like dropping a die, like a mm-hmm. little drop of die into water. And as like the die expands, it keeps expanding as the fandom expands. But then like other people come in, they start dropping mm-hmm. it, and their die drops. But since they drop it in later, then it takes a, it's still taking a bit mm-hmm. for true the expansion. True that. And yeah, um, that analogy is really awesome because well, <laughs> I remember talking to a few people like okay, not Mando in particular, but Mando started it off, and then like his style is this, and then we got Tombstone with his style, so. We have a yeah. array of people from the first generation, and then like later on the second generation, you got like DB Pony, and then later on you got like uh, Forever Free Brony. Forever Free Brony. Right? Oh my gosh, yes, Forever Free Brony. Yeah. He's a cool dude, by the way. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. awesome. And yeah, so you have a plethora of um, musicians there, and not to mention artists. Like artists, we have. Who um, yeah. we have you for example, and we have James. We also have um, Lionheart cartoons. Um, he didn't start off Pony, but he, the work he did for Ponies is really awesome. Oh, he got super popular really quickly just because he yeah. worked on Children of the Night. On uh, yeah. uh, Children of the Night, yeah, that's that was his big break. He did a few more things like Children of the Night. Yeah, he did some other things. It's just that that like since that was shared oh, around yeah. so much, it went viral in the. In the Pretty much everyone got to know him. Like once you can get something that's shared around mm. the fandom a bunch, then people start to get to know you and they get brought to you and they're like, "Hey, I'll go, you know, watch mm-hmm. this person. It's kind of cool." And also, um, fun fact: that video has been seen by Lauren Faust. Yeah, yeah, Lauren yeah. Faust totally loves that video because uh, it's so oh, well made. Yes. It's really well made. It's really well made. And good on you, um, Lion. Keep on doing. <laughs> Keep on doing what you're doing, bro. It's super awesome. Even your other animations too, like all those uh, wanted oh, posters. Yeah. Those were pretty cool. You know, one thing I know from a lot of artists is that, yes, there is those things that make me one big break, like, for example, Tombstone's oh, yeah. Discord. But when I actually met Tombstone, every from 2013, we're hanging out in uh, mm-hmm. Seattle, just around Seattle. Um, anyways, uh, I he was telling me how his least favorite song <laughs> in the entire music library is Discord. He hates Discord with a burning passion because when he did it, it was just a quick five-hour remix. Mm-hmm. It only took him five hours to go do he spent hours and hours and hours on other songs, putting a lot more time, effort, and heart into those songs. Nobody really cares about them. Oh, well, when we, everyone's like, play more Discord. <laughs> uh, it's a running joke at oh, Buck. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's like, it, there's Buck. those things where like it's just that role that people only know you for that role, kind of like with Star Trek captains. Like everyone only <laughs> yeah. thinks of like some people as being like one captain. They don't think of them as doing any other acting, but just being like a Star Trek captain. Like no one ever remembers them for much else. So pro tip to all you true viewers, that, true that. whenever you go and find like a new artist and whatnot, like, yes, you have that one cool thing they do, but also try to go and look at other things they do because they'll really appreciate you for also appreciating other work they do. Yeah, that's also true. Play more Discord. <laughs> <laughs> His Five Nights at Freddy's song is really awesome. Oh, I need to listen to that one. I need to listen to that one. It's so good. Mm-hmm. So, anywho, uh, that's all your shout outs? That's all shout outs I can think of. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshow.gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach, well, <laughs> links are in the show notes. Also, you can reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. So you bought real tweet about the show and also try to keep her sanity. Poor girl. 
And also me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. This week, people, I don't have an addiction to magic. Yay. And you now have a new Twitter follower. <laughs> well, awesome, awesome. And you, uh, Twitter, anything? Or, well, <laughs> I'll put that in the show notes. Oh, I'm getting derpy. I'm too old for this. <laughs> it's cool. I tweet sometimes. I, I, I tweet sometimes. It's it's off and on. I, I don't know. It depends. Awesome, awesome. Anywho, uh, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. And you can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. So, I am Norman Sanzo. I'm Ardell. And we'll see... Well, technically, I Arda won't see you on the next episode unless he wants to come back for next week. But uh, anywho, we'll art you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.